Okay. Now, one of the things we are doing with uh, Hunky is um, some just real basic leadership stuff, which means he's already getting used to it. This is, he came Monday, this is Saturday. Getting him used to that he just cannot get attention whenever he wants. He kind of has to wait for, for my cue. Um, so even just some affection, which he is a, a very affectionate dog, isn't really for free anymore. And if we want our hands to be a powerful motivator, we don't want it to be for free for him. Um, so just simply him being able to get my hands on him is a good enough reason for him to respond to me. All right, right, boy, get over here, boy. Come here, monkey, you good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. So this is a good, good, good boy. Good, good, good boy. He's showing really nice signs to me. That he likes my hands being on him because he appreciates it. Um, and also his. Uh, his experience with me so far has been nothing but trusting. I haven't done anything to him that should cause any kind of discomfort uh, uh, at, at all. So, um, you know, we're, you know, trust is going to be, you know, an important, important part of his, uh, of his uh, training. I'm going to use, show some of the, uh, some of the safety equipment here which we use. It's better safe, you know, it's better safe than sorry. You know, you can't do training, you know, doing aggression rehabilitation um, um, as your full-time job and not use safety equipment because just like a carpenter is going to get hit himself with, uh, with the hammer every once in a while, you know, a trainer could, could, could misjudge the, the dog. Um, Hunky doesn't really strike me as a dog that would snap for the exercise that I'm going to do, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, um, so this way, um, if he ever did snap, it's not a big deal. I know what causes him. I, I learned what causes him to snap, so then we can work on it. So these, like I said, I just put on my forearms to protect against soft tissue, uh, um, you know, injury. If he did snap, I have something to kind of feed him, and I could stay calm, and then. Um, you know, and show you know, and not make the problem worse by sh giving aggression back to him, um, or giving any kind of real struggle. Um, this right here is my uh, is my my thong, which normally I wear this without my pants on, and just kidding, and high heels. Uh, not really. This is, like I, say, like I said before, just to protect uh, protect the groin here. Uh, okay, feel feel great. Um, now we're gonna play a little a uh, little game with him. I experimented with different types of things that Hunky likes and doesn't like. Um, um, he's gonna need a way to kind of uh, you know relieve his restless spirit. All all dogs do have the um, you know, do have an actual desire to, to um, you know, to relieve this restless spirit. I mean, he's obviously some kind of golden, looks like a golden retriever, lab mix. Um, if you don't give him something to do, something to chase after, something to grab onto, um, he's, he's going to be miserable. He's going to find, he's going to find his, own, his own outlets for his, his restless spirit. Um, now, as a foundation style dog trainer, um, we would never play a game of tug, which is what I'm going to play with them, unless you've established or you're demonstrating leadership towards the dog. Um, tug could be a very bad um, game to, to, to play with the dog if you're doing it the wrong way. Because if it's done the wrong way, you accomplish um, the opposite of what you're looking to do. If Hunky felt he owned this tug right here, and he gave it to me, and I played with him, all I'm just kind of doing is reinforcing that um, he's in charge of things around here, that he owns a tug toy, that he could bring it to me, he could play and walk away with it. Which is, if we had a couple of dogs in the room, normally it's the dog that's in charge that's going to be leading those kind of games. But since I want to be the one who's in charge of his world over here, I'm going to have the tug and I'm going to play with him. And it's a really great way um, you know, to also reinforce your own leadership to the dog, tire them out, um, and, and, and teach him some, some obedience by incorporating a, a, a toy into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play tug with him, um, which he's going to enjoy doing. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the game by just not making it fun for him every once in a while. When I'm going to stop the game, make it not fun, I'm going to use a word called out, which he might not really know, for him to release it. Um, if he doesn't release it on the word out, I'll just say the word sit. But he'll pick up on the word out. I'm going to stay very calm. The energy is very important, so he doesn't think um, con confrontational at all. As soon as he releases it, I'm just going to give it, reward him for listening to me by giving it back to him and, and continuing the game with him. The last time I take it away from him and I put it back with my stash, and he's never going to have his own stash. I'm always going to have my stash. I'm just going to give him, give him a treat. So let's see if Hunky wants to play with me. Oh, yes, you will, all right? Hunky set. Good boy. Hunky free. Good boy. There we go. Now, when doing rehab, it's really important if you use like a tug to have like some kind of, uh, I always put like a rope on things. This way I never have to put myself in a situation where I can put myself in danger or I set the dog up for failure. Even if somehow he got this thing away from me, I don't have to wedge it out of his mouth. I just go grab, you know, grab the, the rope and I have control over, over it again. So I play these games. Good boy. I make it fun. I'm going to interact with them. It's a really good way during play, too, for me to test out his touch sensitivities. Um, because he's, uh, he's already kind of in a playing mode. My body language is very playing. It's not threatening to him. Boy, and I can kind of feel them around while I'm petting them. And these are the reasons why I use, you know, use these uh, protective things on my arm over here. But boy, everything he's showing me is uh, pretty much normal, what I get with most dogs that I play. We'll get some play growls in there, um, and this is all really normal. Now, for him to release it, what I'll do just hold it completely still. Hunky out. Oh, what a good boy. Hunky set. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, look at you. Look at you. What a good boy. Good boy. This is a great game for him. What's also good about this is after the training session, he'll really uh, be able to go down and relax in his kennel. You know, he shouldn't feel, you know, it really drains him out. It's good for a rainy day to do this if, if you can't throw around a ball outside for, for a dog. Knowing how to play tug properly is really, is really great. Oh, good boy. Oh, oh, oh. Good boy. What's that? Oh, you do? Um, put the final slot upstairs. Good boy. Funky out. Good boy. Funky set. You're so good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Again, getting him used to me, touching me, it's all within trust. Um, it has to greatly outweigh the touching and petting that I'm doing to him. It has to greatly outweigh any kind of prodding that is done to him. So, good. Funky. Out. Out. Good boy. Funky. Set. That's a good boy. Great. Good job. Good job. Where'd it go? He lost it. He's getting kind of tired out already, so uh, needs to build up a little, little, little more endurance here. But he still has, he still has the desire to play here. But I'm going to end it on a good note with him. I put this away in my stash, and it's a good leadership exercise. He's not telling me when it's time to play. Oh, that's a free one for you. Um, he's not telling me when it's time to play. I tell him when it's time to play. I think he said, "Good boy." So this goes back. Oh. And um, I generally end the session by, um, you know, by pretty much, you know, ignoring the dog for, you know, a minute, half a minute. I'm not going to necessarily just give him attention right away. It's these little subtle things that really count. He's waiting on my cue for what's next. What's next, Mike? You know, uh, next for him is to, to be happy for a while inside of his uh, inside of his uh, crate. So let's see. You ready, Hunky? Let's go, buddy. Good boy. Okay, set. That's a good, good boy. All right. Say goodbye to the camera, handsome. Say goodbye. Set.
Good boy, you're on the screen. Oh, good boy. Who's a good boy?